you serious? Are you serious? Folks, I want to just uh, touch base with you. We've got a, a situation that's very concerning out in Washington State, Mount St. Helens, which if you remember, I was in high school back in the day uh, when actually getting ready to graduate, when on May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted. There was a 5.2 earthquake, and of course, it cost the lives of 57 people. It was an unbelievable eruption and explosion. Well, the magma is rising. I want to thank Rita of Oklahoma for this report. But the magma is rising, and as the levels are slowly rebuilding inside Mount St. Helens, a volcano who did this tremendous eruption in 1980. It's roughly 8,300-foot volcano, and it spewed the hot ash and gases and debris for some 230 square miles, causing more than a billion dollars in property damage. Entire forests were crushed, and river systems were altered in this magnificent blast, which began, of course, with a 5.2 earthquake. Now, the magma reservoir beneath Mount St. Helen has been slowly repressuring since 2008, and the U.S. Geological Survey said in a statement uh, this past week, it is likely that the repressurization is caused by an arrival of a small amount of additional magma, maybe, maybe 2.5 to 5 miles beneath the surface. The USGS said that this is to be expected with an active volcano and does not indicate that the volcano is likely to erupt anytime soon. But if for six years you've been building magma and it's starting to rise, then uh, and it's been, you know, 30, 34 years since this thing erupted, you have to start reconsidering. And here's why I bring it up, because there's been tremors and there's been a, a shaking going on over at Mount Rainier in Washington State. And you've got that super volcano up there in Yellowstone National Park, which has been having, an, had an earthquake this two weeks ago of 4.8. Things have been shaking and quaking. We've seen a, a bison running out of Yellowstone National Park. We've seen deer. We've seen elk. Uh, we've seen buffalo. People, you know, look, there's a situation developing out there, I'm telling you. And the Ring of Fires had so much activity, so many earthquakes and threats of tsunamis. So we understand. And the sun is under so much pressure uh, from the release of filaments and the CMEs that are coming out of these mass ejections of these solar flares, which, of course, when that happens on the sun, that CME, the CMEs come and start affecting the earth with... Uh, with so much pressure on the tectonic plates. And of course, when you have already pressure building in the core of the earth from the, uh, from the magma, well, you have a, you're getting squeezed. Something's going to break loose. So I just want you to be aware of it out there in Washington State. Be, uh, and, and also, if you just read the Bible, you see that these uh, catastrophic events are coming upon the planet uh, it's prophesied very clearly and very plainly in not only the Gospels under Jesus' uh, prophecies in the book of Matthew, I'm excuse me, uh, Matthew and Mark and Luke, but also in Revelation, certainly. And if you read Peter, if you read Peter's writings about the end times, how that the earth is going to melt with the fervent heat and how it's going to dissolve and how even the elements are going to be on fire. So that would sound like a massive eruption of some sort. Could it be from an asteroid crashing into the earth? Yes. Could it be from a massive super volcano erupting? Yes. Uh, so, you know, which way is it or both? Uh, we're going to continue to watch it, but at the same time, I just want you to know there's no fear in the body of Christ because we're already saved, washed in the blood, and we're anticipating the coming of the Lord. But if I was on the planet right now and did not have Christ in my life and, and started to understand the significance of these uh, events that are developing uh, and the fact that you have no guarantee that you're even going to be alive tomorrow, 
I would be very seriously concerned and start asking myself, is it time for me to make things right with God and to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and to get my life going in the right direction? I think that would be a very wise decision, and I'm going to encourage you to do that and call upon the Lord Jesus for salvation. In Jesus' name, God bless, and I'll be back later today with more current world events, how they relate to Bible prophecy, uh, and the powerful Word of God. God bless.